Welcome to Feminine Roadmap Podcast. I'm your host, Gina Farrar. Each week, I bring you an inspiring conversation to help you navigate the challenges and changes of midlife so that you can not only survive, but thrive in your second half. Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. It is Gina here, and today we are going to be talking about the right foods to eat to help alleviate menopause. My guest, Diana Hopkins, is the author of Feeding the Change, and we are going to be talking about how we believe that food is medicine and how what we eat contributes to the success or the struggle of our menopause journey. So, Because menopause is part of a lot of our lives and there's a lot of messages out there, we are going to add a food is medicine conversation here for a way for you to kind of get a little bit more control over the challenges of menopause. So without further ado, Diana, thank you so much for saying yes to me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. So why don't you tell my audience a little bit about how you came into this mission and message? What is it? that led you to thinking about food as the medicine for your menopause journey? Sure. Um, so I've been in the healthcare industry my pretty much my entire career. So over 30 years, I've been working in the healthcare industry. Um, I've sold cardiac equipment. I've worked with doctors in doctor's offices, um, doing uh, med legal reports for people that have been hurt on the job or um, in uh, personal injury cases. And then for about the last 25 years, I've been in both pharmaceutical and um, OTC or over-the-counter uh, products, um, which those include things like cardiovascular drugs, antibiotics. Um, I sold some um, eye health uh, drops for um, dry eye. I worked in the men's health arena for a while. I actually helped launch Viagra back in the day. Um, and I spent a lot of my time in diabetes as well. So I, I sold a lot of different classes of drugs in uh, the diabetes market. And then I also worked another big chunk of it in women's health. So um, I actually sold drugs for menopause. I sold Premarin, I sold Estring, Ospina, Brisdel. So I sold a lot of drugs for that treat menopause. And then I also sold uh, birth control as well. And then most recently I'm, I, I work in the infant nutrition market. So that's kind of a background of what I've done uh, throughout my career. And then um, a couple years ago, um, I was laid off. I was actually selling diabetic medication at the time. And because I'm getting older, I wondered to myself, hmm, is my shelf life up in this industry? <laughs> you know, because I mean, it's serious. It happens to us. I mean, there's, there's a thing called ageism and I, and I think it's real. So I really started thinking, well, you know what, maybe this isn't for me anymore. Maybe I've aged out. I mean, as sad as that sounds, that's how I was thinking. So anyways, I was laid off for a while. And when I was younger, I went to school to be a teacher. So that's what I was, um, after I got my business degree, I actually went back to school and decided, well, you know, I need a backup plan. If maybe I, you know, something happens in this industry, I can go to teach. So that's what I did. So I started substitute teaching. I did that for a little while. Um, and I decided that was not for me (laughs) as much as I love children. And I do, um, I just, decided that that I just felt like I'd come a little too late to that game. I think if I would have started teaching when I was younger, I would have had a little bit more patience, <laughs> but um, I found out that it, um, it wasn't for me. So what I did, so I, I, I used to have a lot of people ask me, you know, questions about menopause because they knew I was in the industry. They knew I sold products for it. And whether it was in doctor's offices or whether it were my personal friends, a lot of people asked me about, you know, different symptoms. Like, what does this mean? Is this a symptom of menopause? You know, things like that. And so I'd be like, yeah, that is. And so I decided, why, why don't I just look a little bit more into this? Like, maybe this is something I need to try. You know, having websites and blogging was a big thing. And I was like, well, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll start writing. Maybe that'll be cathartic for me. So that's what I did. So basically I started a blog and I wrote the whole thing by myself. I created it by myself. I was, you know, just doing tutorials off uh, the internet and things like that, but I did it. And so I was like, and I launched it and I was like, Hey, here's my blog. So, (laughs) and I, and I talk a lot in my blog also um, about just different topics that are interesting to me or things that I've experienced. 
Um, I have everything from very serious blogs to how, you know, the dynamics between parents, you know, aging parents. That's one of my blogs. And then, then another one is funny about, you know, uh, panty liners and what's the point. So, I mean, I go back and forth. I have serious topics and I have funny topics as well. So, um, so that's what I did on my blog. And I still do that. I, I, I blog periodically. And then last year, um, I had a lot of time on my hands and I wanted to understand more about nutrition. I mean, I've always been very careful about what I eat for the most part. I can't say that I'm perfect because I'm not. I mean, I raised four children. So, you know, we ate a lot of fast food <laughs> in, uh, for a long time. But, um, but I personally wanted to understand the correlation between nutrition and menopause and how they're, they are related, if they're related, right? So I started reading and I started reading a lot. Um, what I found out was that there are a lot of foods that could actually help my menopause symptoms, different nutrients, different vitamins, things like that. Um, and I had been having symptoms. And at that time, I didn't want to go on hormones. And I still have not gone on hormones if I didn't have to. Um, not that I'm saying anything bad about hormones, whether they be bioidenticals, whether they be pharmaceutical. Every woman's body is different. And what what you feel that you need is what you need. I personally didn't want to go on hormones. I am actually estrogen dominant. So I still had estrogen. I was just starting to, I had basically no progesterone. So I did in the beginning start using a progesterone cream and that helped. I since then have, don't use that anymore either. I, I don't use anything either pharmaceutical. I don't use any hormones at all. So this is what started me on my journey to write my book, Feeding the Change. So my website is called Accepting the Change, and then my book is called Feeding the Change. Um, and I like to call it my second act <laughs> because I've been, I've been a sales rep. I've been in pharmaceuticals for so long, and this is something completely different. I really kind of started it to, to, to show my daughters, because I have three daughters, and other women, not just my daughters, but other women, that we have no limits. We're not just stuck in one thing. And for a while there, I thought that's all I could do because that's all I did. So I kind of took a leap of faith, if you will, and, and wrote the book. So I started writing and I wrote for months. I just would, you know, every day I'd write a little bit more and then I'd research and then I'd write a little bit more. And so Feeding the Change is, is my ebook about what real food can do to help our menopause symptoms. So one of the first articles I read was on how Japanese women have very low rates of hot flashes and basically overall symptoms. And I thought, how could this be? How could they not have the same symptoms as us, right? Like, don't all women have these horrible hot flashes? Don't all women have night sweats or mood swings or whatever? So I thought, what are they doing different? And, you know, 80% of women in the United States experience hot flashes. That's a lot. <laughs> While in Japan, I read that it was about 7%. Only 7% of women experience these horrible hot flashes that every woman I knew was having. So what I discovered, and obviously it made sense after I read it, is that their diets are completely different than ours, right? Their diets are rich in omega-3s, vitamins, and they um, also, obviously they don't eat processed foods like we do. They, ate, they eat real food. So that's why I wrote the book. So on the topic of the Japanese... I recently read about mushrooms and miso, mm -hmm. and that is a big part of alleviating menopause symptoms, mm -hmm. mushrooms yes. and miso. Mm -hmm. So I thought when you said Japanese women, I'm like, I just read something about that. <laughs> don't ask me where because I don't remember. But I was wondering, did you come across the whole study of miso and mushrooms? Yes. Well, and actually mushrooms have selenium and obviously miso soup is basically based on soy. And I'll get into that. I'll talk a little bit about soy and how soy works. Well, it is a phytoestrogen. So yeah. yes, so it absolutely does. And that's why I think that food is so important. And, you know, I wish I would have understood this when I was younger, really understood it, how how food really nourishes our cells and how it feeds our cells. I know that's, I used to tell my kids that all the time. I go, you know, feed your cells, like feed your cells, <laughs> to eat healthy. And I mean, I said it, but I really didn't understand the meaning behind it until I really started doing all this research and the importance of nutrients and what they do for our bodies. You know, just even like vitamin C, 
with um, like I I started years ago starting eating oranges a lot more, tangerines or those little cuties. I love those little cuties during the Christmas season because I used to always get sick. And so, you know, I'm like, maybe if I up my vitamin C, that might help. And sure enough, it did. (laughs) So, I mean, not that that's going to help everybody, but it did help me. So, you know, food, food is energy. Food is medicine. So, well, and a balance, right? The balance yes. of the foods. I think we have a tendency to get out of balance and that that's not good either. There's kind of right. like a variety is truly the spice of life is variety, yes. the health of life. Yes. And real food, not, not processed foods, not, you know, not canned ham, not, or, you know, like spam or, or, you know, food that's made or deep fried or anything like that. I mean, we've got to eat healthy and it's so easy if we just you know, there's steps that we need to take to help with that. We just got to be smart about it. So let's talk about some specific foods and their benefits. So you talked about selenium and mushrooms. Yes. Okay. Okay. So basically how I break the book down, I I have several chapters. Okay. So basically first I talk about menopause symptoms. You know, there's about 25. There could be more or less depending on who you are. Um, And everyone is different. Everybody's experience with menopause is going to be different. My symptoms are going to be different than your symptoms. So that's how I started. I also include an eating plan um, if you want to lose some weight. It's a healthy uh, 1,500 to 1,800 calorie plan that actually anyone can do. It's not just limited to uh, menopausal women. Anybody can do it. And then I also give some meal ideas, like different foods that you can make, simple foods like stir fries, rice bowls, smoothies, things like that, where you add all these healthy foods and you eat them the way that they're intended. Um, I also have a chapter on serving sizes. That's something that I've struggled with, (laughs) is that I used to um, think, oh, well, I'm eating almonds. This is good for me, but I'd eat like 70 almonds. (laughs) You're supposed to eat like 17 in a serving. So I talk about serving sizes and how much a serving size is. Then I give examples on how to stay successful and eating healthier. So basically tricks to stay on track. This I really like because I was sabotaging myself. I didn't have all the, the food ready. And that's the thing that I talk about in this chapter is that you, you really need to do the prep. You need to cut up the vegetables. You need to put them right in front of your face. You can't have them hidden in the, in the drawer because you're not going to use them, right? How many times have you come home from the grocery store, put your salary in, in the drawer and then forget about it. And then a week later, it's bad, right? We have to, as soon as we get home, cut them up, put them right in front of us on the shelf whether it be, you know, food in the refrigerator or food in the cabinet, it has to be accessible and you have to see it all the time. And it works. I'm telling you, it works. Then exercise, you know, exercise is so important, but we can only do what our bodies will let us do. I know when I was younger, I could do anything, (laughs) right? And now I can't, I have limitations and don't compare yourself to others. You do whatever you can do. So I like to hike when the gym was open, I used to go and do swimming. I love to swim. I love to do water aerobics. I love to do that. I love to walk. So there are certain things that I like to do that my body can handle. I, I can't really do a lot of twisting of my knees or anything um, because that just does, doesn't work for me. So just do what you can do. And then um, sleep. I have a chapter on sleep talking about how important it is that we get between seven and nine hours a night. I know most women don't get that. I don't get that. On a good night, I get seven, but it's so important to regroup our bodies. That's how our bodies heal, right, is sleep. Then I also have a chapter on supplements, things like magnesium, different vitamins, why it's so important to eat real food and the benefit of those nutrients. So anyways, so then I have the last two chapters of the book, and I'll get into the book now where it talks about the specific foods. So the the last two chapters, the, the first chapter is kind of condensed version of all the foods that are good for that particular symptom. So I break it down into symptoms. So like the first one will be say hot flashes. That's the number one complaint of most women is hot flashes. So that's how I break it down. So the first chapter or the first section is on hot flashes. And then it talks about, like I said, the first list is a condensed list. The second list is a more elaborate list. So it talks um, about, for example, hot flashes. So soy, it talks about soy and it talks about, it has, you know, contains isoflavins or phytoestrogens and phytoestrogens are naturally occurring nutrients that are derived from plants. And although they're not generated in the human body, they are very similar to the female hormone estrogen. 
And that seems to be what the problem is when we're having hot flashes is that we have, we don't have estrogen anymore. We're having less and less estrogen and that's why we need to supplement it or some women need to supplement it. So that's why food is so important because there's a lot of foods that we can eat that will work in the same way as hormones, but we're not taking a synthetic hormone. We're taking, we're eating food. We're eating what we're supposed to be doing, right? We're taking all this food in and we're feeding those symptoms. So does that make sense so far? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. So the hot flashes are a drop in, oh, in absolutely. the estrogen hormone. Absolutely. Both hormones, both estrogen, progesterone, well, progesterone even uh, the male hormone. Testosterone. Thank you. <laughs> testosterone. We, you know, we lose all these as we get older. I mean, that's the problem. That's why we go through menopause. But estrogen is the dominant one that seems to be the most linked to hot flashes and night sweats and things like that. So yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's, and then other things that have like, so phytoestrogens, um, you mentioned miso. So that's soy, right? So that's exactly where that is. Um, Whole grains are phytoestrogens, yams, apples, pomegranates, and then other things like omega-3s, you know, those are very important as well. Fish, seeds. And that's why you see a lot of these, that's why it makes sense that the Japanese don't have as much, as many symptoms as we have, because this, this is the diet that they eat. They eat a lot of fish. They eat a lot of soy. Those are the kind of things that they eat. Um, they also eat, you know, fruits, vegetables. They load up on those things. And those are the things I think our American diet or even North American, I'll include Canada in that as well, that we don't eat that way. And we should be, there's, there's no reason. I think in the fifties, when they came out with a lot of these processed foods or easier foods to save you on time, I get it. It was after the war and I get why they came out with that, but we have these foods available. We need to be eating this way. It's just better for us all around for everybody, not just menopausal women, but for everybody, real food's important. So with, with regards to hot flashes, there's so many other vitamins, you know, uh, vitamin C um, that helps manage blood sugar levels, which can reduce hot flashes. Iron, folic acid, calcium, all those are important in treating, you know, that are good for hot flashes. So, you know, there's, again, mood swings. Let's just take mood swings for, for an example. Um, berries, beans, dark chocolate, leafy greens, those are all good for, for mood swings, right? So there's, like I said, there's like 25 different symptoms on here. And then I list different foods and different vitamins that help with that symptom. So what you're telling me is, Diana, that I can actually run to food when I'm having <laughs> symptoms in a healthy way. Yes. And, and hey. see, that's, yes. And that's the thing. And I, I'm guilty of this myself. I eat really healthy, but sometimes I just eat too much of that healthy food where that's where, like I said, I have an eating plan in there as well that will help you stay on track. So, I mean, again, if you eat healthy and if you eat real food and you eat food to help your particular symptom, um, you may have several. I, I've had several symptoms, mood swings, hot flashes, lack of concentration has been a big one for me, sleep. I have real issues sleeping. That's something that's affected me in the last few years. And food is obviously, for me, one of the most important things. But, but sleep, again, sleep is where we, we regroup. And a lot of women, I have a friend right now who's going through this right now who just cannot, she just cannot sleep at night. She's having so many hot you know, night sweats at night. And so there's other things that can contribute to that as well. Keeping your room cool. I mean, I know that sounds so simple, but it's true. I mean, the optimal temperature for your bedroom to sleep, to sleep good is between 62 and 67 degrees. And I love that. <laughs> That's where I sleep the best. I don't even turn my heater on at night. I sleep in a very cold room and I love it. Also simple things like just putting your hair up off your neck, that takes your temperature down by a bunch. Um, just simple little things that we could do also help to eliminate our symptoms. So when we get onto hormones, again, I'm not on hormones and I have, I never have been. However, every woman is different and some women really feel that they need to. I'm not here to tell you what's best for you. I'm just giving you another option. You should always check with your doctor, your OBGYN, before you start any program, right? Whether it be losing weight, whether it be eating differently, whether it be 
hormones, talk to your doctor first. So I'm not a doctor. I've worked with doctors for many, many years, but I am not a doctor. I just know that when I changed how I ate, I alleviated a lot of my symptoms. It's interesting how, you know, a little bit of research on, on something like this, you've done all the research and put it all into one resource. But thinking about even magnesium, if we're going to talk about that specific one, that is so important to sleep. It's important yes. to relax the body as well. Right. So magnesium right. hits several symptoms, does it not? Yes. Well, magnesium is a, is a natural relaxant. So it helps uh, deactivate adrenaline and it prepares the body for rest. So some foods that have magnesium would be bananas, uh, nuts. Seeds, avocados, fatty fish, like salmon, um, whole grains, kiwi, yogurt, a lot of those have magnesium in. And you're absolutely right. Now, magnesium, I, I actually had to go on a magnesium supplement and it helped. It did help. So um, again, and that's another chapter in the book is on supplements. So that's something that you may want to talk to your doctor about. Because I did talk to um, my doctor about that because when she did my blood work, I was extremely low in that nutrient. So I went on a supplement. And that's the thing. I mean, there's going to be different ways to treat your symptoms. This is just one way. It's an easy way. It's an easy way to treat my symptoms. I like eating healthy. I feel better when I eat real food. Eating food, not just protein or not just veggies. You know, there's all these diets out there that are saying, eat this way or eat this way, eat soup all day or eat this all day. And it's just not it's just not manageable. It's just, it's not, it doesn't work. You have to eat all food. Again, food is medicine. Vitamins, nutrients are so important to our health. Don't deprive yourself of that. Like, you know, a lot of, I, I've had people say, oh, I don't eat fruit. I'm like, what do you mean you don't eat fruit? I'm like, oh no, it's too high in sugar. And I'm like, well, some are high in sugar, but fruit is essential. It's got a lot of nutrients in it and it's got fiber. Like I love oranges and oranges are packed with fiber. You know, that little white Part, when you peel the orange, that's the best part of the orange. That's where you get all your nutrients from. So, you know, eat the food and eat it in its natural form. That's another thing. I eat, I do eat a lot of fruit and I eat fruit in its natural form. I don't eat, drink a lot of juice. I don't drink orange juice. I don't drink um, apple juice. I mean, not that I, you can't, you can. I'm just saying that if you eat the whole fruit, you're getting all the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, those nutrients are what's feeding your cells. And that's what's helping your symptoms. Yeah, so. I think when it comes to back to your point about getting yourself tested, yes, seeing a nutritionist or someone in, or a homeopathic doctor, wherever you need to go to get a panel done on all your vitamins and minerals. Absolutely. A lot I think of us are low. Yes. And I think that's critical. And that's what I did. Several years ago, that's exactly what I, I did. I went to a specific doctor who actually checked all my hormones. <laughs> she, and it's crazy. She took 17 vials of blood out of my body. I thought I had no blood left, <laughs> but she ran a lot of tests and she found out exactly where I was. So yeah, I highly recommend that you do that. You go to your doctor and they, they can tell you, I remember my doctor telling me, she was, Oh yeah, you're, you're in menopause. <laughs> it's like, I needed a blood test to tell you that I know, I know that I'm in, in menopause, but some women don't, some women think that their symptoms are something different right? They think that, um, oh, maybe I, you know, maybe it's something worse. Maybe I have like cancer or maybe I have this or maybe I have that. And, you know, I'm not discounting that because sometimes your symptoms are something worse, but that's why it's so important to go to your doctor, have them run your blood work, have them check because they can tell you exactly where you are in your cycle. So, well, this yeah. whole idea about worrying about what it is or is not, the mental clarity, I was reading something about how the whole mental clarity challenge, like when we start to feel fuzzy and we can't remember the names of people we know, yes. this is a symptom that I'm experiencing. It's, it's not all the time. Yes. When it happens, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I know this person. Like, why can't I? And it scares people and they feel like, oh no, am I getting early onset uh, dementia or Alzheimer's? Yeah. And so it's good to get educated about that because, um, if we're eating, the better we eat, the less our body has to work at breaking down something it's not familiar with as well. Yes. We're feeding our brain. So we're, yes. we're helping more functions than just the menopause when we eat better. 
Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, to me, that's like first and foremost, you're feeding your body healthy and your body is going to react to the food you put in it. So the better you eat and the better you take care of yourself, the better you're going to feel. That's, I, I just know that when I started eating healthier and just started following kind of like the things that I write in the book, I just have so much more energy all the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just feel good, you know? And then when you feel good, you portray that to other people and you feed off that. So it's, just, again, it's another way to, to combat this thing we call menopause. <laughs> and um, there are days and I, I get it. I mean, you know, I know how difficult it is in menopause. I understand. I've had the symptoms. I still have the symptoms occasionally. I mean, occasionally I'll have a night sweat. I wake up and I'm hot. Usually it passes pretty quickly. I don't, I've never really had really bad symptoms of menopause. I've been lucky, but I think it's because again, I eat really healthy. Um, I exercise. Um, I try to sleep really well. I mean, that's not really up to me. I go to bed on time. It's just my body can't shut my mind off a lot of times. But I know a lot of people, and I and I saw it when I was working with doctors, when I was calling on doctors, when I was giving presentations on menopause. I saw women and how hard they struggled with menopause, and it broke my heart because they would just be just going crazy, like stop this, it's horrible, like I'm always hot or I can't concentrate or I have these headaches all the time, or whatever it is what their symptom was, it's debilitating at times. And I mean, all of us women are in this together because we all go through it to some degree. Some, like my sister, for example, had hardly any symptoms going into menopause. My mom had every symptom. So, you know, even if you're in the same family with somebody, you're still going to have different symptoms. And, And then some people, you know, menopause is one of those things that some women start much younger now. That seems to be something that's happening as well. And that makes me think it's diet related as well, but it can start anywhere from your thirties. Um, it can go up to like, I started menopause last year and I was 56. So I was a late starter for menopause. My really good friends started in their late forties. So the average age of menopause is 51. That's the average age, you know, uh, if you take all the different ages together. But then there are women that after they have hysterectomies, they are thrown into menopause. So they could be in their late 30s and going into menopause. So, and then, you know, some women, unfortunately, I hate to say this because your audience is going to hate me, but some women, their menopause symptoms last for the rest of their lives once they get it. Not bad, but they still experience like hot flashes and things like that. My mom does actually, and she's 83 she will have hot flashes every once in a while. So a lot of our lives are spent in menopause. So I feel it's better that we learn how to treat it, how to eat better, to you know diminish the symptoms of it, because we may be in this for a long time. And so, but we're all in it together. So we just have to, you know, that's why I make fun of things. Sometimes I laugh about things because it's, it's inevitable. You're going to go through it. It's just how badly you're going to go through it. Well, I mean, if you think about it, we've been one hormonal confusion since our teen years. I mean, my goodness, you have the start of your cycle, then that's the craziness of what we go through emotionally. Then when you have children, you have the, you know, you have the emotions when you first get pregnant and then you have those emotions after all the hormone shifts that our bodies have taken on women is insane. You're absolutely right. Starting, you're right, from when we start our periods (laughs) until we... So we die. <laughs> <laughs> but here, I know. The, the, let's talk a little bit about, I'll share what works for me right now. Perfect. So I use a natural progesterone cream mm-hmm. and I take an herb. Mm-hmm. So I go as natural as I can, but the progesterone cream for me is really helpful because I actually had a really rare symptom, which was vertigo. Mm-hmm. And that one I didn't know was a, a symptom. I actually was interviewing, this is a true story. Mm-hmm. I was interviewing a, a, an MD about menopause. Mm-hmm. The first time the vertigo hit me and I had to excuse myself from the conversation while we were recording to go throw up. Oh, wow. I wasn't quite sure what was happening. So I asked him about the vertigo and he confirmed it. Mm-hmm. So there are some unusual symptoms like vertigo. It's not as common. Right. Skin symptoms like 
I, whenever I don't get sick very often, but when I do, it's always something that people are like, Hmm, cause I reacted to, you know, when you get engaged, everyone's like, you have to go on birth control. So I was on birth control, maybe a week and a half. And I had this really crazy reaction. And this is something to know about our bodies. So that synthetic hormone that they put into my body, I can't take it. It literally put hives on the back of my legs and the back of my arms. It was really strange. And it took a team of doctors. They'd never seen it before. And they told me, don't ever, ever take birth control because mm -hmm. the, the base ingredients, what I had a reaction to. And even though they didn't know much about it, they were like, You're, it'll put you in danger for connective tissue diseases. So I've always been more cautious with synthetic hormone because I've already physically had a reaction to it. So as time went on and I was introduced to a natural bioidentical, they call it mm -hmm. a progesterone cream. Cause when the, the estrogen spikes at some point when the progesterone drops. So the progesterone keeps the estrogen. It's kind of like a leash. Balanced. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. <laughs> the progesterone is a leash for your estrogen. So if you're estrogen <laughs> dominant, progesterone can be a way to bring a little sanity to your body. Yep. And that, yep. I had a thyroid, autoimmune thyroid disease. That's how I was introduced to progesterone. I was okay. much younger, but it threw my hormones because the thyroid, that's another thing to look at. A lot of women going through this, their thyroid's out of balance. And the thyroid is a mighty little body part yes. <laughs> that messes with your sleep and your metabolism and your hormones. It's like this little yeah. tyrant when it's out of whack. Yes. And so, you know, that's the other thing is knowing where your thyroid is at, because that can be impacting negatively. Absolutely. Because you can have similar symptoms when your thyroid's out of whack. Yep. So, you know, these are all things that I've learned through my own journey, but I take one herb that I learned about at, there's a store called Clark's out in our area. We're in California. Mm -hmm. So we have mm -hmm. Clark's. It's a nutritional mm -hmm. store and it, it has helped me because I'm not having crazy symptoms, but I was having about the time I was 51, mm -hmm. hives on my feet. My feet freaked out mm. and I, could, it, I couldn't touch my own feet. But as I started getting back on progesterone and getting in these regimens, like watching what I'm eating and kind of making these natural adjustments, it slowed the roll. But it's really interesting if women are listening to this, there may be a symptom that's very scary. Vertigo is scary. I've had it twice. But as long as I stay on my regimen and yoga, is something that's good for my body. Yes. Because it, the flexibility and, and when you do yoga, there are certain moves. I don't do crazy yoga, by the way, because I'm not. <laughs> I don't either. I, I'm not I that exactly. skilled, my friend. There's no way that foot's going to end up back there behind my head. But, right. <laughs> but what it does is it helps with the lymphatic fluids flowing through your body. It helps with circulation. It also helps your organs. She, the gal that I use... Uh, I'm going to shout her out. She has no idea that I exist, but she's just wonderful. It's a yoga with Adrian, one N. And she talks about how it massages your organs. And so mm -hmm. we live a much more sedentary life. I do now, especially on, well, here we all, we are at the time of this recording, we're all on quarantine. So we're much more sedentary. And so this is a way of doing something gentle that can actually relieve stress. It can get the circulation and the blood flowing and the lymphatic fluid flowing. And I think for those of us in going through this hormonal thing, mm -hmm. having some kind of practice, it will support our body in a different way. Cause you know, food is definitely like the big, big piece, mm -hmm. but I think having that holistic approach to all parts of our body is really important. And that's, that's just me sharing what I've been doing and how it has really helped to stabilize. And it's kept those weird symptoms away. Is yes. I, I also started taking magnesium and calcium together. Yes. Because mm -hmm. a doctor told me that the absorption yep. is better when you do them together. And so I, you know, getting that yeah. simple advice and figuring out, okay, this is what your body needs just to be normal. Right. Right. <laughs> Please. And there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle of menopause. It's not just one thing, right? Someone go, oh, this is the magic pill. No, there's so many things that go into treating menopause. Really, there is. And you're absolutely right. Yoga, I love yoga. Well, it just makes you feel like when you stretch and, you know, those muscles, it, it just, it feels incredible. Yes. And breathe. Oh. Yes. Yes. And that's another thing that I learned from my yoga instructor as we get older, our breaths shorten. We don't take as deep of breaths as we used to when we were younger. We don't breathe the same way. And I never thought about that, but I remember laying in bed 
one night going, she's right. Like I can't breathe as deep as I used to breathe. And that's something normal that happens to us as we get older. So it, you know, yoga is really good to teach you how to breathe right as, as well. And all those things contribute to, to us feeling better. You mentioned skincare, and I just wanted to tell you a story about that. And you're absolutely right. Skincare, our skin goes crazy when we go into, horm- uh, into menopause. And it's usually where you break out the most in menopause is down along your chin line. And That's your oh, hormone center on your face. Yes. Your jawline is breaking out. Look to your hormones. Yep. And that's what I had. And I was like, what is going on? Because I've never been someone who has a lot of acne. I didn't grow. I mean, I would get like one big one, you know, on my face, but I would never get, I never had a face of acne. So when that started happening, I was like, what is going on? Like, I don't break out. So yeah, I went to the doctor. I'm like, what is going on here? Because my whole chin area was inside of my uh, cheeks were getting acne. And she said, yeah, that's hormonal. So that's what happens. That's where you break out. When, so if you're getting older and you start breaking out on your chin, know it's the fluctuations in your hormones. <laughs> that's what yes. happens. Yes. yes. And, and it can be combined yes. with the hormones, like something you're eating that is just not working. And it may be, the thing about healthy eating is, and seeing a nutritionist, if you're having weird things, somebody can tell you, which Mm -hmm. foods are are going to be your best medicine too. Mm -hmm. Back on the fruit thing, I think we've gotten so scared about sugar. Yes. (laughs) If we're a healthy person, not diabetic, right? a healthy sugar, meaning coming from a fruit, not Mm -hmm. from a bag, there are things that are happening with a fruit, with the fiber and everything else, and you can eat it with a protein and balance out the sugar and benefit from all of the things. And so that's where the nutritionist comes in, where you pair your food, yes, the combinations that will give you kind of like a special medicine, right? You get, if you yes. can have this, if you have it with this, then your body actually can experience the benefits on a greater level. You nailed it. That's exactly right. You know, all those nutrients work together. And again, um, there, there may be fruits that sometimes do affect you in a bad way. Like say maybe you're allergic to pineapple or something. So you don't eat pineapple. You just don't eat it. <laughs> you know, don't eat something that's bad. That's going to have you caught, have an allergic reaction, you know, eat the things that are healthy for your body. And that's why I list so many different things in my book, you know, like even if there's certain uh, fruits, for example, that have vitamin C, you know, I give you a list of them. You don't have to eat all of them. You know, just the ones that you like and the ones that are, that work well with you, those are the ones you eat. Don't think you have to eat pineapple because it's on that list. If you're allergic to it, just eat the ones that you like that are, that are for that symptom, I guess I should say. And what you'll see in this book too, there's a lot of stuff that repeats. You know, so you'll be like, oh, omega-3s. Omega-3s are good for all, all sorts of things with menopause, right? Not just hot flashes. It's good for all sorts of things. And you mentioned vertigo. And that's interesting because you're absolutely right. I mean, that's something that I never knew about either when I was going into menopause. And I too had vertigo. And sometimes I still get it, not very often, but every once in a great while, I'll start feeling kind of dizzy and I'll be like, it's menopause. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I get it too. I get it too. So, and then um, lack of concentration seems to be one that, you know, I just forget easy, simple words like two. I mean, I just can't think of, I'm like, what's that word? What's that word? And again, that's all of our hormones fluctuating constantly. So, um, and then one that really, I, I didn't really think about until I started experiencing it and I was writing this book was joint pain. I'd never really had that before. And then when I was doing my research, I was like, oh my gosh, why do my, my joints hurt? You know, and although arthritis does run in my family, if you will, I know that I do have some arthritis, but the way that my joint pain came on, it didn't come on slowly, <laughs> it just came on boom. So I, I kind of knew that that was more of a hormonal thing <laughs> that yeah, that when was you get blindsided by some yeah. symptom and you're like, what the heck? Yeah. And I don't know if you do this, Gina, but sometimes I'll like, me and my girlfriend were laughing about this the other day. It's like something will happen. We'll be walking and we'll get like this sharp pain in our heel or something. We're like, what's that? Like, where did that come from? Like, it's like our bodies are just completely <laughs> going to heck in a handbasket. You know, we're like, well, how is this happening? <laughs> I don't understand. But just like what stuff. you do, I'm like, I just woke up. That's all yeah. I did. <laughs> 
And then some days you wake up and you feel great. And other days you're, you're like hobbling to the bathroom. And you're like, why am, like, why are my joints hurting today? So yeah, menopause is fun. <laughs> I tell you know you. But the thing about the food and like the, the breathing and the yoga mm -hmm. is at first it's hard. Yes. You know, it is hard to make a change, but you kind of have to choose like, what kind of hard do I want to live with? Mm -hmm. Do I want to be feeling the best and making the hard changes? Cause it is hard. We're habit creatures, right? We're creatures of habit. We do what we know. And I, I think just, just do one thing at a time, but just yes. find a shift, find a place to pivot that you're willing to commit to. Yeah. For me, my husband just asked me like two or three days ago, he was like, what's your regimen? And there was a reason for the question. I don't remember what it was. He didn't tell me completely, but he had a point. And I was like, you know, to be completely honest, it's being aware of food and that progesterone cream. We cannot run out of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my horm my, uh, herb, you know, but I have the supplements like the magnesium and calcium. Yes. And I also take vitamins. One of the things on a side note, I don't know if you've researched this, but something that's really helpful for health in general is our gut health. It's like our second brain. So if yes. we're feeling terribly foggy, even if we're eating well, if our biome in our gut is out of whack because for too many years we haven't taken care of it, like I have a collagen supplement that's mm -hmm. a gut health version. It's mm -hmm. kind of mango flavored or something. I, um, I'm going to shout out one of my favorite companies, which is Ancient Nutrition. It's Dr. Josh Axe. He's like a great resource for menopause, draxe.com, I think. But anyway, he's got a lot of articles on menopause to support the whole nutritional side. Essential oils, I didn't yep. mention that I use essential oils as well. Just thinking about gut health as part of your, you know, probiotics, Prebiotics, probiotics, they're yeah. both, yep, very, very important as well. Yes. It really supports your your brain, just your yes. brain alone, my gosh. <laughs> Isn't it funny how sometimes you start you start taking a supplement of some kind and then you really notice the difference? And then there's other times you take them and you're like, I don't think this is doing anything. I don't I think feel this is a, a joke. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> prebiotics, you're absolutely right. And you know, and again everybody's different. Some people like supplements, you know, yogurt, you know, they've got those, that Activia yogurt that is, is really good for, for what you're talking about, the gut biome. That's really important for that. So there are foods as well. Um, kimchi, you know, things that are fermented um, foods, right? Yes. Fermented foods are very important when it comes to gut health. Exactly. So, and all those are healthy for you as well. So, you know, like I said, there's, there's something to that Japanese diet. And especially if they're eating a lot of fish, if they live in coastal areas and you know, they're, that's what they're eating. That's what their diet Fermented is. Fermented so. foods. Yep. It's miso, yep. mushrooms, yep. and yep. fish. It's, yep. Yeah. And great. Edamame. Do you like edamame? I love edamame. Every time we go out for sushi, I eat a big bowl of edamame. So um, that's, you know, soy. So that again, there's, there's your, there's your uh, serving for, um, for hot flashes for the day. <laughs> a pickle full of edamame. Right. But so I think I gonna, that's, that's something to think about the soy on yeah. two sides. There's two sides of the coin of soy. If, if someone is younger and they're estrogen dominant, mm -hmm. soy can actually exacerbate. Yes. And, and also women that have had breast cancer. Yeah. They also are people that want to stay away from soy. So it's, um, it's the phytoestrogens. Knowing what foods have phytoestrogens, I think, the more natural state you can get a food, mm -hmm. the less processed, yes. the more close to the earth, I guess, that you can exactly. get. Exactly. Making sure that our meats, if, if you can at all afford it, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that your, your dairy and your meat is no hormones added. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because all of those things add up in our cells. That's the catch. If we haven't okay. taken care of ourselves for years, I think we make menopause worse because our cells have a buildup of the, the phytoestrogens. We're out of whack. Our gut's out of whack and our yeah. cells are out of whack. And, and so sometimes it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like, okay, it's like when you buy a dilapidated house, now you got to mm -hmm. tear things down to build it back up. And I feel like that's how our bodies sometimes come to menopause. We have to we have to basically correct yes. bad habits and the damage we've done to ourselves. Yes. So it might be a little bit worse before it actually gets 
better because we have to turn the ship around. I agree with that. That's a great analogy. You do. You kind of have to turn the ship around because you've been going down this horrible path for so long. And I know I was guilty of that because again, I had four kids. We was running them around all the time. We were eating very unhealthy. (laughs) Then when I would cook, it would be box stuff because I was always in a hurry because I had to get them to their next sport or whatever. So yeah, so it's just, we do, we need to completely get a different mindset. We need to change everything that we were doing. And again, start eating healthy if we have to take supplements. I, I mentioned a few minutes ago about joint pain. Something that really helped me with my joint pain was turmeric. Again, that's a natural herb and you can take it in pill forms. I actually like it. It's called Queenol. It's a liquid and I get it at Costco and it's, it's a little you know, you, it's about, you take like 15 milliliters, I think 15 mLs. And anyway, so you, um, you just drink it or you can put it in your morning smoothie. It's like orange flavor and it's really good. And that helped me a lot as well. And that was a natural supplement. So um, that was tur- a turmeric, turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. Just T U M E R I C. But I mean, so, the supplement you bought was a liquid turmeric. So I bought the liquid turmeric, but they do have, they do have pills with the powder in it. So you can do the powder as well. Either way. So, but I use the Queen All. It's spelled Q-U-N-O-L. And it's, um, I get it at Costco. It's a big bottle. And um, I just put that in my smoothies in the morning or I just drink it. It tastes good to me. So I just, you know, I'll take a little shot of it every morning. So, and it helped a lot too. So that's what I'm saying. All these different things can, um, combined will help as well as omega-3s. Omega-3s are always good too for joint pain. And that's another thing. Foods we eat are inflammatory where we don't want our body to be in that state, right? So we want, you know, that's why anti-inflammatories are so popular, (laughs) right? But omega-3s are good for that. Turmeric, like I said, is really good for for my body. It really works for me. But vitamin D is another one that's good as an anti-inflammatory. Glucosamine, chondroitin, those are another things that sometimes my doctors had recommended that for me before. My joints are the ones that get inflamed really bad, so... But it seems like since I've been, you know, again, since I've been eating healthier, taking some supplements, I don't have the issues that I used to have. So again, I love your analogy. We have to turn that ship around. And, and you know what, you have to be willing to do the things it takes to feel better. You can't just say, oh, I want to feel better and not do what it takes to, you know, to have that outcome. You really need to work hard at feeling good. I know. And trust me, the older we get, and my mom tells me this all the time, she goes, you're going to feel it. You're going to get, you know, as you get older, it gets worse and worse and worse. So I want to keep myself as healthy as I possibly can for as long as I possibly can. So, but that takes work. You know, if we have the mindset of, I just want a quick fix, the problem is, is we shortcut ourselves, right? We, I'm not saying that if you want to take a prescription solution mm-hmm. that you shouldn't, we we really need to still look at the whole picture. Right. Because exactly. if we band-aid something and ignore everything else, we're going to mm-hmm. fall apart and then we're going to have to keep doing the band-aid things. If that's part of the protocol that your doctor suggests taking a prescription, mm-hmm. you have the choice to do it or not to do it, but do it in partnership right. with healthy living. Exactly. Right. And you'll get the maximum benefit from those as well, if you need to take something else. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not just one thing that's going to make you feel better or or alleviate your symptoms. It's got to be, yeah, multiple things that go together and eating healthy is just one way, you know, hopefully it's, it's the majority because you know, it means it's good for everything, not just menopause. But But I think it's your foundation, is it not? Of course it should be. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we all have to eat, right? So we might as well eat healthy foods. And hydrate, hydrate. Oh, yes. Hydrate. Water is very important. In fact, you were talking about vertigo. Water is very important. That's one of the symptoms that water, especially um, headaches. We forget that a lot of times when we have these symptoms, we're just dehydrated, right? We, we don't think that we're dehydrated, but we are. And so if just drinking some water can help alleviate those pretty quickly. You know... I know some people really cannot stand water, but there's so yes. many options now. Water is my primary. That's actually just what I like. Yes. I don't enjoy soda. I know there's people out there who can't understand. 
when you think about something like sodas, it's full of sodium and sugar and sugar. <laughs> it's like you are just killing yourself if you're going through menopause and you're, and then when you add the diet soda, you've made it worse because now you have more chemicals. We have to really think about our body like a machine. And we all, we all have things that we eat and shouldn't eat. So I am not a hundred percent person, but if you can do the Pareto principle, the 80, 20, yes. get to where 80% of the time you're just crushing it with your lifestyle. Yes. And then you can choose to, you know, do that other 20 if you want to. Absolutely. And I agree with you. I think that's a great, um, 80, 20 plan is a great idea. You know, like Easter was what, two days ago and I didn't exactly eat the way <laughs> normally eat on Easter. We had banana cream pie, we had things that I don't normally eat, but no, you've got to give yourself, you know, a, a pass every once in a while. You've got to be able to, you know, to eat that if, if it comes across. I mean, I don't deprive yourself all the time. You know, if you, like you said, if you eat good 80% of the time, 90% of the time, this cheat every once in a while, you'll be okay. It's just the constant eating of those kind of foods. And you made a good point about water. I'm just like you. I just drink water. I don't drink soda at all. I never have really. It's never been something that I've really liked. Um, so that's never been a problem for me. I never had to give that up. But I, I agree. A lot of people love their soda. Um, and quite frankly, diet soda is almost worse. I, um, I, I worked with a lot of endocrinologists when I sold diabetic medications. And I had this doctor do a dinner program for me one night. And he was telling me how horrible diet soda is it's worse than regular soda because the way it mimics sugar and the way actually you're, you're drinking it, it's so sweet. You're drinking so much of it that you're, um, you're actually defeating the whole purpose. So he, he was like, diet soda is the worst. So if you're going to drink soda, <laughs> he said to drink regular soda. He said not even to drink diet soda. But again, yeah, all the chemicals that are in it, um, uh, again, all those things are unnatural. <laughs> It's not natural to go in our bodies. Um, some tricks for water that I've, I've done, and, and, you, and a lot of people know these, but if you go to spas, they always have these big things of water and they have like watermelon or strawberry or mint or, you know, something that they put cucumber. in. Cucumber. Yes. And I'll tell you, it does make a difference. I love to put berries in my water or whatever, just to, you know, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. But I like you, all I drink is water. So I'm not, I'm not afraid of the taste of water because that's what I'm used to. But a lot of people, like you said, have issues with drinking water. So if you do try to spice it up with some fruit or some mint, or like you said, cucumber or, you know, something that will make it taste a little bit different, but you're still just getting all the benefits of the water. And they have those really cool drink things now where you can put the fruit in the little cylinder. So the yes. particles aren't, I don't like floaties in my water. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like a kid. I'm like, oh, there's something in my water. It just grosses me out. So I'm like, no, we can't be having chunks in my water. That's not yeah. good for me. But, you know, they do have those really cool drink things where you can. Yeah. The what are they like? Infuse your infusion or defuse? I don't know. Yeah, you're something right. like that. They have yeah. them like it, 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 most of the stores that we would shop at where, where yeah. we spend more money than we should. Just choose one of those stores. They have them there. Those are great. But I think too, that when we think about our bodies and because I had that autoimmune disease, what it came down to is becoming aware of myself, you know, yes. just learn to listen to your body. Amen. <laughs> that is so true. And we don't do that as younger women. We just power through everything. And now that we're in our forties, fifties, sixties, we need to realize that, you know, our bodies will only do so much and we've got to be kind to our bodies, our bodies, our minds, everything. We've got to be kind to ourselves. We, we, we can't beat ourselves up anymore. We're, we're, like I said, we're all in this together. We need to be kind to ourselves, to each other. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because listening to our bodies is, that sounds like very woo woo, but what it is, is like, <laughs> you know, let's say you get off on a tangent and you're eating something more often than you used to, or that you mm -hmm. stopped eating. And when you eat it, what happens? Do you notice a difference? Do you swell? Do you have, do you feel sluggish? Do you, you know, just learning to pay attention to our bodies. And one yep. thing before we're already at the top of our hour, dang it. I hate when that <laughs> happens. So 
But you talked about cheating on ourselves. I spoke to a gal and she said, we need to quit using on the topic of kindness. Mm -hmm. We need to quit telling ourselves we're cheating and we need to think of it as a treat because it shifts the way we view what we're doing as we're not being bad. We're just making a different choice today, knowing that that's the choice we're making today. Right. doesn't mean that, okay, now I'm a complete loser, (laughs) you know? So I think listening to our bodies and allowing ourselves to be kind and and know that a box of cookies isn't a good choice on any given day, but four (laughs) cookies is okay. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, no, you're absolutely right. Do it, but don't, don't sink the whole ship because you've made a choice. Think of it in terms of just a choice. Exactly. And start over tomorrow. You know, it's not the end of the world. Like, okay, so I blew it today. <laughs> like tomorrow's a new day and I'm going to go back to my, you know, my regular eating. So and I don't have yeah. to keep screw. I don't have to keep doing that all day. I can make this choice to treat myself. I'm going to have four cookies or six cookies or, or whatever. Somewhere in the world, I decided four cookies. I don't know where <laughs> that came from. I can do four cookies and be totally happy. I don't know what that is, but it, it works. So we're at the top of our hour and we've talked about a lot of things and I know that your book is a great resource. So of course, that's one of the tips I would give is to, you know, get somewhere, get a book that you can start with the information. Mm -hmm. Somebody's already done the research like Diana has, and you don't have to go do the work right off the bat. That will make it easier to make the transition. So that's my tip. But what, what are three kind of tips you can give people on what you've experienced from your own opinion. We're just sharing our lives. We are not, we are not diagnosing. We're just saying, Hey, this is the life experience we're having. This is what we've learned. Let's take this collective information and see what helps us. So from that collective kind of uh, mindset, what three things have been really helpful for you that might help another woman who's going through this journey and who might be at her wits end or might be starting the journey and kind of afraid of it like what right. are the three things we could um maybe um, suggest i would say that just know that every body is different so what's going to work for me may not work for you i think that's crucial because i think that everybody thinks there's a one shop you know one stop shop of how to do things correctly and there's not every body is different like i said um I, i've used things in the past that have worked for me and i still do where other people use it and it doesn't work Tylenol is one of those. It does nothing for me, <laughs> but a lot of people love it. <laughs> so work again, either. yes, every body is different and physical body is different. So I would say that would be one. And the second one, again, food is medicine. Remember that. I think that we get caught up like we need to take all these different medications. No, food is medicine. So it's simple. It's a simple idea, but it's true. And then I guess lastly would be eat real food, real food, not processed food. Don't eat just one thing all day. Be Eat real food and eat a variety of food. That's what's going to keep you happy. It's going to keep your cells happy. It's just going to keep your overall body happy. That is awesome. Every body, every physical body Mm -hmm. is different. Food is medicine. And eat real food as close to the source as possible. Get that variety in there. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Well, Diana, I want to thank you so much for sharing what you've learned with my audience and just opening up the conversation to, hey, did you think about this? Did you think about that? And I really honor you for taking that journey and kind of jumping into something and sharing your knowledge with other people because some of us think things, but we don't share it. So I thank you so much for taking the time to write it down and to spend this time to help another woman who's going to hear this and maybe help her turn her ship around and not feel like she's losing her mind. So thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Today I've been speaking with Diana Hopkins. She is the author of Feeding the Change. Her website is acceptingthechange.com. And if you head over to www.feminineroadmap.com forward slash episode 163, I will have hyperlinks to her resources. And my friends, while you're there, please leave your name and email address. I send out periodic emails. For now, friends, we're doing what we can and where bodies are changing, our lives are changing, and Feminine Roadmap is here to be an encouragement to you. 
please take the time to share this message with a girlfriend you know that is struggling because we have the resources right in front of us to help begin to live a better healthier, more manageable life through this menopause journey. And if you're a younger woman and you're listening, it's never too early to start a healthy journey by making food choices now that will prepare your body for the changes that are to come. Ladies, I'm so grateful for you that we are in this community together. I want to thank you for grabbing a cup of something wonderful with me a couple of times a week and having these conversations. Please remember to share that cup and that conversation with your friends. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to sharing more inspiration with you in the weeks to come. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.